Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today we're going to talk about a fascinating subject, the wanderers, the star seeds, the volunteers. If you haven't heard these concepts before, I have discussed it on other episodes on The Reality Revolution, particularly on several episodes I made around Dolores Cannon that I inevitably had to remove. But in those episodes, which I highly recommend you read the three waves of volunteers and the new earth, she is interviewing people in regressed hypnosis. And some of these interviews are fascinating. She had this talent for interviewing people and exploring past lives and then getting in contact with the being deep inside or the subconscious and at times other beings would come into the hypnosis session and they all talked about the same thing they talked about coming to this earth from other planets incarnating as humans to help the earth in its current transformation that it's going through right now So I wanted to talk about this some more. Now you see an early hint of this from someone named George Hunt Williamson. He was an anthropologist of considerable reputation uh, and began reporting UFO contact in the early 50s in the same way of channelings. And he published several books about his contact experiences, none of which were seriously given credence or consideration by his peers. The books contain much that we still consider untrue. Uh, Williamson said that the sun was not a hot flaming body, but a cool body. And that he had, that we had two moons, one a dark moon, which was unseen. He was told moreover that the moon we already know about had an atmosphere and water. So some of those things are a little bit untrue, but in this book, Saucer Speak, Williams quotes a UFO source saying that the two apples we saw, we return and no explanation is given. And then in another one of his books, Other Tongues, Other Flesh, he interprets this statement as a promise made to a certain type of individual on earth. It, it seems that throughout the history of earth, people have been born into our planetary vibration who are not earth natives. That is, they have not incarnated into the physical from earth's spiritual densities, but from elsewhere. They are true extraterrestrials in that their previous experience is of places everywhere in the universe. They are true earth natives in that they have gone through the process of birth, entering first the spiritual realms of earth and from there incarnating into our physical plane, just as any earth entity would do during the birth process. The apple usually loses the memory of his extraterrestrial past. He is truly of this planet as he enters his physical plane. His purpose in coming to earth is twofold. First, he hopes to advance his own vibration or thinking by experiencing the strong catalyst of our physical world. It is a sort of trial by fire approach, the chance to advance more rapidly than is possible in less dense vibrations. Secondly, he hopes that he will be able to reawaken the dormant memory of why he came to earth and so be able to carry out his mission of service to earth men by helping to increase their awareness of universal reality. It is not a foregone conclusion that the apple will remember who he is and what his mission is, but most apples have at least a strongly developed tendency towards meditation and contemplation so that gradually many are indeed able to recapture at least a portion of that memory. Here is the portion of other tongues, which deals with this. Now this is in his book, other tongues. He says there were several statements made in the saucer speak that are significant in connection with these wanderers or apples seeds may be planted, but they can rot and never reach maturity. This means that the people of outer space knew what was going to develop on earth. 
They planted some of their own people here, salted them, away like apples. But every seed that is planted or salted away does not grow and reach maturity. It may rot in the ground because of many conditions. Therefore, some of the wanderers now on earth do not know who they are. They are lost in the ways of the earth and on physical death will return to their own worlds. They will be none the worse for their experience except that their mission will not be accomplished. Space intelligences know that a certain percentage of the apples would fall by the way, therefore enough of them incarnated into earth bodies to make up for this inevitable deficiency. There's a source that channels a being called Nada Yolanda who says the same thing. You have people who have come from other planets who know no such thing as life on other planets. Who even may not believe in life on other planets, yet they are in your Earth's atmosphere waiting, living the life, normal, so-called average, everyday, prosaic lives, according to you who are studying and they still are receiving. Their teachers are around them. Their higher selves know who they are and what their destiny is. Not everyone will succeed. Many will go through the life experience and never be aware. And waste or not make gain. But they are neither to be judged nor condemned. It's interesting. I've met people I know were starseeds. And I could tell they were just not meant for this or from another place. I think it's possible that my girlfriend probably is, but I don't know if I am. There's a portion of my higher self that does not want me to regress. I have done regressions. I am a hypnotist, so I've definitely conducted regressions on other people. But there's some little voice inside of me that says it would hurt my path to know. Almost like I shouldn't know. It shouldn't matter. I don't want to make it my identity. I do meet people that make this their identity. People that haven't even regressed. They just say, hey, I know I'm a wanderer. So there is several books and I wanted to discuss some of these. And Carla Ruckert and Don Elkins also talked about it in several other books. Don Elkins and Carla Ruckert, if you do not know, were two of the three people that participated in the Law of One sessions or the raw material. I've discussed this on other episodes as well, and we will be reading some of the sessions from the Law of One material. These were channeled sessions from 1981 through 1984 in which three people participated, one of them asking questions, one of them writing down the answers, and one of them acting as the channel. The channel did not even know what was being said for the first 21 sessions. And the information in the channel is very fascinating. So the Don Elkins and Carla Ruckert, who were two of the channels, had also been writers and had been investigating the UFO phenomenon from a channeling perspective for decades before that channeling. And they had written several books. The concept of there being entities from other worlds is an intriguing one to many people who indeed have never felt at home on this planet, living the earth life. In general, apples are said to be poorly suited to the third density vibration and have problems adjusting to the socioeconomic web of our culture. Indeed, often they have persistent health problems, but they do not appear alien or extraordinary. They are just people. There are many people on earth that don't really belong here said one channel. This doesn't mean that they came here aboard a flying saucer, disembarked, put on a tweed suit, polished up their English language and moved into the house next door. It does mean, however, that there is a special class or order of beings in the universe that are different from the rest of because of the fact that they wander from one world to another and from one system to another. These people, however, tend to be 
set apart by their inherent bias towards the kind of love and brotherhood oriented messages that the confederation of planets which is a group discussed in the law of one material that is governing social memory complexes and planets in many galaxies and focused on service to others and this is what is hoped what they call with these star seeds that it will awaken and remember that they are here to give light to planet earth from the early williamson book that we mentioned before he says ponder speaking there are now many young people in your world who understand our message they will accept it quickly for they are of the new age the great awakening is here many of our people are in your world now and from the being not a yolanda we have contacted key units because they are teaching this new understanding or aquarian development now that is why we come through in this way why do we not come through your to your government heads to your very educated scientists education to your way of thinking of course because they would not change the temperature of the mass consciousness for they do not believe in thought transfer or thought control or thought power but your key units do and that is why we contact them primarily secondarily because they are us many of them have incarnated purposely from our realms dimensions and other planets to do this work knowing how to do it we ask you to remember it we ask you and stimulate you through our control and through our interest in you and through our mental communication and spiritual education with you to do this that is why we have concentrated for so many years 25 years to use a loose segment of time in teaching these new age thoughts to those already planted so they could begin to regulate the thought temperature of mass consciousness it takes time now is the time for us to show ourselves and to make the project a physical manifestation the extraterrestrial source that carla ruckert spoke about known as ishkomar adds to the footnote on apples or star seeds by mutual agreement between a planetary dweller and an inhabitant of our craft the knowledge and the memory of one of us may be blended with the planetary without the loss of the receiver's identity the one from our group adds only his knowledge to the planetary dweller and the abandoned body is disseminated this blending may not take place without mutual agreement between the beings involved and the planetary dweller must fully agree and desire this blending we seek therefore not to take but to give we however are not alone in our interests in your world there is in existence with us another group their interests are not necessarily harmful toward you but yet their methods are in direct opposition to ours they also have interfered with the development of your planet they wish to reach their ends not by cooperation but by control and domination you must reach a high level of mental development and knowledge to be able to understand our purposes we have attempted to gain your cooperation for thousands of years we have been vigorously opposed by the other group we must achieve our goal by guidance of your kind but we must desire guidance for us to be of assistance to you this source describes a type of apple which is no doubt very heavily in the minority there must be very few of these around but i do think they exist however our main interest in this is to explore the concept of the apple developed by williamson and others of the star seed for i do think that there are very many of these star seeds among us today and few if any serious researchers pay any real attention to williamson or anybody that talked about this stuff and others contact the information since it's just not investigated in the proper way in a regression session 
Williamson says, if these wanderers didn't arrive here by spaceship, how did they get here? And the entity he was talking to says they volunteered to come to Earth and go through the reincarnational cycle here. In other words, they were born here. They have birth certificates. They went to school, had the childhood diseases, drank soda pop at the corner drugstore and made eyes at each other in school or threw spitballs at the teacher. In brief, they were exactly the same as all the other people on Earth, except for one thing. They didn't belong here. They occupy physical vehicles and are born to parents of their own choice, who they feel will best give them the advantages and training they need to fulfill their mission on Earth. And an entity known as Sutko in the Don Elkins and Carla Ruckert book on the Confederation says, from time immemorial, teachers of light came to planet Earth, incarnating from other planets, from other systems, even from other galaxies, and from the realms known to you as the non-physical or supernal realms of existence. And great companies of light came into incarnation, carrying with them the banner of truth and love and light. In all the simplicity of these teachings and in all dedication to the one creator and his laws, these bands of lighted ones came down into incarnation and to the darkness and the degradation which they oftentimes found and incarcerated themselves in flesh. Not for their own experiencing, though much they did experience, but with a basic motive of service to the one creator and his creations a motive of love and compassion. When we talk about service to others, what a wonder is is the ultimate in service to others. They're sacrificing an entire lifetime just in service to others to help the planet out. If you are a wanderer, it is very likely that you are on a path of service to others. That's why you are here. And what ultimate service could you give to do a sacrifice to go backwards in time essentially? At each time when one of the great ones whom you speak of as avatars, this being says, came many less teachers, many lighted souls, great in compassion and service. Often their tasks seemed small, yet they formed a chain, a pattern of strength, and each upheld the others. And as each company whom we have termed the goodly companies went forth, they went in groups of souls. Who had worked and known each other from lifetime to lifetime. Oftentimes, star seeds will end up meeting people in their lives, and there are groups that form. This entity goes on to say these souls are incarnate once more upon planet Earth in many areas. These souls work for the f upliftment of the planet and for the dawning of the age of reason at the end of this cycle upon the planet. These souls who have come into incarnation have formed what is known as the light lines and the light centers throughout the planet. Some there are who have gone forth on lonely ways and have been cut off from their fellows and have worked alone in the materialistic world. They have sought to bring that understanding which is theirs, a glimmer of truth which they have remembered wherever they have found themselves and in whatever capacity they have labored. Now many of these who have worked alone join with others in order that strength may be given to all, that the pattern or web of light which is now woven around the planet may be vitalized to its highest capacity. In another session, Williamson, in his regression, the client says, so there are several million people in the world that have nothing to do with this world as far as learning anything from it they haven't already acquired. They either pass through many lives on Earth, planet itself, or they learn the same lessons on another world similar to the Earth. At any rate, they are far ahead of the average Earth man or woman. Why do they come back? The answer is because they want to help. They feel that there is something far more beautiful for man on Earth to attain. Now, there's a book that Don Elkins and Carla Ruckert refer to a lot, which is a fascinating book, hard to read called Owaspe, the largest channeled work of all time, thousands of pages. And they talk about the service to self and service to others distinction in that as well. They quote the book 
in the confederation on this subject of the wanderer saying to serve others is to do good unto others to help them to teach them to give them joy and comfort this is the service of jehovah but good works alone are not sufficient to attain the highest grades for they require knowledge and the capacity to unfold others to accomplish which those of the higher grade shall oft return to the lower and learn to lift them up for this is that which calleth the Etherians in the times of resurrection, wherein the righteous, who are yet mortal, begin at once lifting up their fellows, which labor is to the spirit as exercise is to the mortal body, that which giveth strength. Judge then thyself, O man of the earth, as to the place thy spirit will rise in time of thy death. In another session, they ask, in a regression, and the client asks, why did you come to Earth? And the person says, two reasons. I knew that I wanted to help this planet. It is in a bad way. And a lot of people that are here are calling out. They want help very badly. And you can't help unless you are in the body here. It's very intense here. There's no way to get into the enough to help without infringing on free will unless you're in the body there are no easy solutions here so the real question is why now why is it so important why are all these wonders coming now check out my episode on shifting to the fourth density as discussed in the law of one material and an explanation of what that means but what does it mean to shift to fourth density and why is it so important? What's going to happen to the planet is the question. It sounds like some crazy stuff are going to happen to the planet. It's the age of love and understanding. And in the explanation in the Law of One material, a big chunk of the planet forms what is called a social memory complex. It's kind of like a group mind. And if this group mind is working towards service to others, Imagine having the full knowledge of the earth as a working group mind. What would happen to the planet? Well, first of all, there would be a slow unveiling, an awakening in knowledge, seeing the injustices in the world and a response to those injustices. Here is one explanation that's given in channeling by Carla Ruckert in the book on the Confederation written prior to the law of one channeling. This entity says, All I can say is it is a feeling that we all have, feelings and vibrations from everything and everywhere. We receive also. It is a feeling like giving birth. It is time for Earth to be born. She has gone through many times of labor, many hard stages of development. But giving birth, hopefully the planet will live. But if it is the will of the infinite creator, the Earth may not. We do because it is. No one guesses at the infinite creator. But we develop. We have our task. And we do this because it is our task. We need to pass tests. We need to achieve oneness, dissolution in the infinite creator. Just as all peoples. We come to help give birth to the new earth. But we cannot give it life. That is the free will. That is the communication between the creator and all of the earth not just in the voices of the people it is in the invisible and the unheard of the tiny tiny places inside of each person and each thing that communicates to the infinite creator its will and we can only help each of those tiny places realize its kingdom and its glory and if it hears then so be it it is a hard thing it is a painful thing for i feel its birth I feel that the earth is inside of me and I worry because I have no real control over the life and death of this child. This is why I'm sad. I'm sad because we are all one and it is hard to stand back and not know whether your child is going to live or die. And although its death will be its birth, I know that the illusion death can do when the mind is weak, I pray as we all do for the peoples on earth to hear, even if it's with their inner 
ear, we pray for each soul to awaken. And we stand ready for that split second when someone might turn around and see that is why we are here. Nothing more and nothing less. We are here as gods. But we are gods that grovel and know the blessing and the love that we give and receive from those who step on us. Because we were them also. It only takes time, that illusion, time to stand up and be gods to someone else. We pray for the earth that she will be born. Soon there will be many things, confusion at the time. There will be much busyness as it is called. And that time there will be false witness and false rumors. And those who want to play mischief with this important time. I see all of this standing on the platform. I see this with my mate. It is a pouring through me, which is why I am able to talk for it. For soon this knowledge will be closed. For those of us who still know the reality, there will be no miracles. Miracles are for the unfaithful. Miracles are tricks. And so now the time is the threads of all these apples are coming together. Steiger, another great author who wrote a book called The Aquarian Revelations, which I recommend, who also talks about this. I wish I could read more of it, but there's one quote I wanted to read where he says, We have sought slowly to bring to you information relevant to the times in which you now find yourselves. We have sought through many of our channels, our people walking the surface of your planet, to present through all avenues open to us, whether these be that which you term fiction or fact, data or imagination, something of the change which is about to take place. And what is this change? One person, George Van Tassel, who claimed that he was spoken to by aliens all the way back in 1964, wrote about some communications that he received from different ufos and aliens there's one part that's interesting he said there are 12 densities in the system we occupy each of these is divided into 12 major cycles each major cycle is divided into 12 minor cycles when a solar system moves out of one density into another it is called a master cycle the solar system that we are in is now in the arc between the third and fourth densities for the planet earth in this solar system, this is the time of times. The Earth is culminating a minor cycle, a major cycle, and a master cycle at all at the same time. This will bring about a rebalancing of the planet on new poles. When this occurs, the great earthquake written of in Revelations will take place. Another source says, our understanding of time relates to magnetic cycles. Perhaps we have imperfectly expressed ourselves on this score in that we cannot seem to convey to you the relationship between cyclic time, magnetic cycles, and our understanding of time. In the book Owaspe, the channeled work I mentioned before, they talk about these cycles. So Jehovah said, Now will I prune the earth and her heaven. Behold, the division of Waga shall be hewn and cast beneath the waters of the ocean. Her heaven shall be no longer tenable by the spirits of destruction, for I will rend the foundation thereof and scatter them in the winds of heaven go ye therefore down to the earth and provide nets and vanchas for receiving the spirits of darkness and for receiving the spirits of mortals who shall perish in the waters and provide ye a place in my exalted heaven suitable for them and ye shall wall them about in heaven that they cannot escape but they may be weaned from evil my Ethereum ships of fire shall surround Waga on every side, and I will cut loose the foundations of the earth at the borders of the ocean and the mountains of Gan. Nor shall any proper cornerstone stay my hand, and I will send rains and winds and thundering, and the waters of the great deep shall come upon the lands, and the great city shall go down and be swallowed in the sea. That sounds a little scary. That's what they were quoting, Carla Ruckert was, from, and Don Elkins. Now, Carla Ruckert channeled a being called Hatton, 
Hatan is kind of my favorite, a little easier to understand than Ra, but also a member of the Confederation. Hatan says, There are many vibrations within this creation. It has been written in your holy works that in my father's house there are many mansions. This was a statement of these conditions. The mansion or vibration in which an entity finds himself is a result of his desire. If there is a separation or choice to be made, then it is up to each entity to select according to his desire. For that reason, we visit your planet at this time to attempt to help those who could wish to make their choice. There are many who have chosen already, even though they are not aware of it. There will be an experience in this illusion in the not too distant future which will be alarming to some of the people of this planet. We are attempting to provide understanding of the truth of this experience prior to its occurrence. Our service is to aid those who wish to choose a different mansion. Once again, I want to read this from Hatan again because this is mind-blowing and it's important to read a second time. There will be an experience in this illusion in the not too distant future, which will be alarming to some of the people of this planet. We are attempting to provide an understanding of the truth of this experience prior to its occurrence. Our service is to aid those who wish to choose a different mansion. If an entity who has chosen a particular mansion, then he will receive it. It is not a good or bad place, it is simply a different place. There are several events that will occur. There will be events of a physical nature. These events will be from the point of view of those who are living with the illusion of a very destructive nature. However, there is no such thing as destruction. There is only change. This you must understand. If you understand this, then you will understand the truth of what is to occur. There will be a change, a physical change. This change will be very beneficial. However, the people of this planet who view these changes from the present state of ignorance will consider them to be quite destructive. This is unfortunate, however, the people of this planet have had a sufficient length of time to become educated. They have, however, sought to educate themselves in the same ways of their illusions rather than the ways of the Creator. This illusion is so strong in their understanding that most of them have no awareness in waking sense of reality. These people will be very difficult to communicate with, they will view the changes of their immediate creation as destructive and irreversible. So the next question was to Hatan, will this be an earthquake or a depression or what? Hatan says, the changes will be of a physical nature. The depression of which you speak is of no consequence. It would be viewed as nothing compared to the physical changes that will occur. It will be necessary for members of groups such as this one who wish to serve to understand fully the reality of these changes and to understand fully the accuracy of the statement made in your holy book which states that although you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. This must be kept uppermost in your consciousness for you will walk through this valley and you will demonstrate to those who seek your knowledge of truth and only your ability to demonstrate this knowledge will alert those who seek the knowledge that you are a true and knowing channel. For many false channels would this time be lost for they will not be able to demonstrate their knowledge of truth. For they will cling to the illusion that has surrounded them and will display the fear that this illusion brings upon them. This change is looked upon by those of us who understand it is an extremely beneficial change. It is also looked upon by those members of groups such as this one who have realized the truth of this information as extremely beneficial to all the peoples of this planet. It will be difficult for some of the members of groups such as this one to demonstrate an understanding of these truths, since they have been strongly affected by the illusion that has been created by the people of this planet. However, this understanding is a necessity to be demonstrated. The next question was, what exactly is going to happen? Hatan says, physical changes of all types. There will be massive destruction wrought upon your surface. It will be of such a nature as to totally change the surface of your planet. This destruction is within your planet at this time. It has been put there by thought. It has been put there by the thought of the population of this planet through thousands of years of thinking this thought. 
This thought is of a vibratory nature. You are at this time passing through the last portion of what you know as the third density vibration. Shortly, your planet will be sufficiently within what you know as the fourth density vibration. At this time, there will be a disharmony between the thought that creates the vibration that is your planet and the thought that dwells within the density that is the fourth. Much energy will be released of a physical nature. This energy will create physical changes within your planet. There will be changes within your land masses, changes in your atmosphere, changes in all of the physical manifestations of your planet. This will be of a nature that will be considered to be cataclysmic. This is a very good thing, however, it will not be considered good by those who are within the illusion. Labeling this change good or bad is something that is dependent upon the individual observing the change and his orientation. My friends, the reason for this change being of a cataclysmic nature is that the thought that has been generated upon and in your planet for the past several thousand years is a thought that is out of harmony with the new vibration that your planet now goes into. The Creator never conceived of the condition that is shortly to manifest upon your planet. This condition is manifested as a result of the desire of all the individuals that dwell on this planet. They are not aware of this desire, but their desire has created this. They have created a condition by their desire that is shortly to be severely out of harmony with where they will physically be. Due to this, there will be a large energy release which will manifest itself upon your planet in the form of earthquakes and storms, eruptions. In fact, a shift of the poles of your planet will with respect to their orientation in space. This change that will shortly manifest itself upon your planet, as I have said, a result of the mismatching of vibrations of your planet and its new position in space. This change will alert many of the people of your planet who are very lightly slumbering and many of the ones who are slumbering relatively deeply. Many of those people will at this time be what is known in many of your religion as saved. It will save them because they will get the violent awakening that is necessary to cause them to raise their vibrations to that last amount that is necessary to get them off the fence. There will be those who are more deeply slumbering, so to speak, who will not make the transition. It is up to you to provide those who will be awakened with the information that they desire. We have stated that this transition is both good and bad. Ultimately, in its most broad sense, it is a good transition. However, it is an unnecessary transition. In a normal transition, there would be no energy release, since in a normal transition, the vibration of the planet would match closely and be in harmony with the new and higher vibration. This would result in no energy release, and the planet would continue in a relatively normal sense from a lower vibration to the higher. Your planet is an aberration in the evolution of the spirit of the people of the planet. The change that will take place will be a, a beneficial change, however the mechanics of the change will seem anything but beneficial. Those of the people who dwell upon the surface at this time, who are totally aware of the results of this change, and the reason for it will not in any way be affected by this change. Those who are not aware of this, but who are aware of this in a spiritual sense, will be affected only emotionally, because they will not understand. There are the people we wish to communicate with. Now, Many experts emphatically feel that the catastrophic time is not necessary. That's what Carla Ruckert and Don Elkins were talking about. We could avert it if we came into harmony with the new vibration. In fact, the precise timing of the earth changes depends entirely upon us. In one channeling with Hatan, they tell Carla, we of course cannot interfere but do ask that you who are on earth planet work metaphysically mentally with love in your hearts to eliminate as much as spirit will allow to be eliminated danger fear panic and loss thank you we are on the alert we do not know when and how some of these will strike but they are scheduled from what we can gather of auric conditions and mass thinking in this section of the world 
which is very serious at this time. Now, she does point out later that in some past examples where aliens that have channeled have given these cataclysmic warnings, they turned out to be big earthquakes like in the sevens, but they weren't as bad and that sometimes these entities are, shall we say, overcooking the books to make it seem much worse than it really is and to take what it is in your heart and your heart knows the truth. In Carla Ruckert's book, The Wanderer's Handbook, she does have a questionnaire where she asks questions such as, did you often think or daydream or fantasize about UFOs or ETs? Do you feel like ordinary things around you are strange, like the body or the color of the sky or trees? Do you ever feel if your parents were not your real parents that you had a missing brother or sister? Or did you ever have magical dreams of flying invisible spirit friends or receive special guidance and protection? Do you ever look at the night sky with longing? Are you kind and gentle and peaceful and non-aggressive? Are you hurt and saddened all at, by any human evil and cruelty? Do you feel that money is not important? Do you sometimes feel more comfortable with plants and animals than with people? Are you generally sensitive, considerate, generous? And concerned about others around you those are some interesting questions and there's some more so i would check that out in her wanderer's handbook and you can get a better idea of it but really the best resource to understand the wonders is just to go into the law of one and read some of their descriptions and this is where we first get their description of the wanderer if you go to the law of one dot info you can get a full complete text of the channeling of Ra in the Law of One sessions, as I explained before. Ra is a multidimensional being of six and a half density that's three and a half billion years old and comes from the planet Venus. And this planet had gone through a similar transition as we are going through now. And, and they became a social memory complex essentially about a third of the planet did and the rest of the planet had to go on and incarnate on other planets but when they did this that was the shift in density that they talk about when they talk about the harvest and and, and the wanderers so if i do a word search of wonders for the text we have some very interesting things come up in these sessions one the first question that is asked by Don Elkins, you spoke of wanderers. Who are wanderers and where do they come from? And Ra explains, imagine, if you will, the sands of your shores, as countless as the grains of sand are the sources of intelligent infinity. When a social memory complex has achieved its complete understanding of its desire, it may conclude that its desire is service to others with the distortion towards reaching their hand figuratively to any entities who call for aid. These entities, whom you may call the brothers and sisters of sorrow, move towards this calling of sorrow. These entities are from all reaches of the infinite creation and are bound together by the desire to serve in this distortion. How many of them are incarnate on earth now? The number is approximately due to a heavy influx of those birthed at this time due to an intense need to lighten the planetary vibration and thus aid in harvest. The number approaches 65 million. If we have 8 billion souls on the planet, the number that Ra gives of 65 million is rather small. The likelihood that you are a wanderer statistically is low, but it's still a possibility. And another question, are most of these from the fourth density? What density do they come from? Ra explains, few are there are of fourth density. The largest number of wanderers, as you call them, are of sixth density. The desire to serve must be distorted towards a great deal of purity of mind and what you may call foolhardiness or bravery, depending upon your distortion complex judgment. The challenge and danger of the wanderer is that it will forget its mission, become karmically involved, and thus be swept into the maelstrom 
from which it had incarnated to aid the destruction. Another question, what could one of these entities do to become karmically involved? Could you give us an example? Ra says, an entity which acts in a consciously unloving manner in action with other beings can become karmically involved. Do any of these wonders have physical ailments in this earth situation? Due to the extreme variance between the vibratory distortions of third density and those of the more dense densities, if you will, wanderers have as a general rule, some form of handicap, difficulty, or feeling of alienation which is severe. The most common of these difficulties are alienation, the reaction against the planetary vibration by personality disorders, as you would call them, and body complex ailments indicating difficulty in adjustment to the planetary vibrations, such as allergies, as you would call them. Is there a best way for these entities to heal themselves of their physical ailments? The self-healing distortion, Ra explains, is affected through realization of the intelligent infinity resting within. This is blocked in some way in those who are not perfectly balanced in bodily complexes. The blockage varies from entity to entity. It requires the conscious awareness of the spiritual nature of reality, if you will, and the corresponding pourings of this reality into the individual mind-body-spirit complex for healing to take place. We will use this instrument as an example. The portions of its ailment, as you call this distortion complex, that can be perfected in balance are due primarily to a blockage of the indigo ray or pineal energy center. This center receives the intelligent energy from all sources lawful within the one creation that is lawful in this third density distortion or illusion. If there is no blockage, these energies pour or stream down into the mind-body-spirit complex, perfecting moment by moment the individual's body complex. This instrument also experiences some distortion of the green ray energy center which you may call the heart center. It is overly open to an intensive desire distortion on the part of this mind-body-spirit complex towards a service to others, as you may call it. Universal love. This entity, therefore, spends itself without regard to its reserves of mind-body-spirit complex distortion in regard to what you call strength or energy. This distortion is primarily due to the blockage of the indigo ray, as we have said before. The misapprehension distortion of the instrument responsible for this blockage is the basic orientation towards a belief in unworthiness. The unworthiness distortion blocks the free flow of intelligent energy. The seventh or violet ray is unimpaired, this being not only an energy receptor but a sum total of the vibratory level of the individual. The other energy centers are also quite clear. The solution to healing in this case is action that puts into practice the peaceful understanding in humility distortion that the entity is one with the Creator, therefore perfected and not separate. In each case of what you would call ill health, one or more of these energy centers is blocked. The intelligence of the mind-body-spirit complex needs then to be alerted either by the self as healer or by the catalyst of another healer, as we have said before. Question. The many wanderers coming to this planet now and in the recent past, are they subject to Orion thoughts? Side note, Orion is indicated as an entity of a group of aliens that are negatively oriented on this planet that are oftentimes involved in government and are involved in places of power in the world that are working on the manipulation of the world and in service to self. Ra answers this question. As we have said before, wanderers become completely the creature of third density and mind-body complex. There is just as much chance of such influence to a wanderer entity 
as to a mind-body-spirit complex of this planetary sphere. The only difference occurs in the spirit complex, which, if it wishes, has an armor of light, if you will, which enables it to recognize more clearly that which is not as it would appropriately be desired by the mind-body-spirit complex. This is not more than a bias and cannot be called an understanding. Furthermore, the wanderer is in its own mind-body-spirit complex less distorted towards deviousness of third-density positive-negative confusions. Thus, it often does not recognize as easily as a more negative individual the negative nature of thoughts or beings. In another question, Don Elkins asks, Would then the wanderers as they incarnate here be high-priority targets, shall we say, of the Orion group? That is correct, Ross says. And if a wanderer were to be successfully infringed upon, shall I say, by the Orion group, what would happen to this wanderer at the harvest? If the wanderer entity demonstrated through action a negative orientation toward other selves, it would be, as we have said before, caught into the planetary vibration and then harvested, possibly repeat again the master cycle of third density as a planetary entity. So they're saying here that if they fail, that they may go back and have to reincarnate again. So there's a big risk in coming to the planet. In the last channeling, it, they did indicate that they go, you go right back to your planet. In another question on session 32, Don Elkins asks, am I assuming that we have previously looked at, we have on earth today, and we've had in the past fourth, fifth, and sixth density wanderers as they come into incarnation in the physical of this density for a period as a wanderer. What types of polarizations with respect to these various rays do they find affecting them? Can you tell me that? Ross says, I believe that I grasp the thrust of your query. Please ask further if this answer is not sufficient. Fourth density wanderers, of which there are not many, will tend to choose those entities which seem to be full of love or in need of love. There is the great possibility, probability of entities making errors in judgment due to the compassion with which other selves are viewed. The fifth density wanderer is one who is not tremendously affected by the stimulus of the various rays of other self and in its own way suffers it itself when a need is seen. Such entities are not likely to engage in the, shall we say, custom of your peoples called marriage and are very likely to feel an aversion to childbearing and child raising due to the awareness of the impropriety of the planetary vibrations relative to the harmonious vibrations of density of light. The sixth density, whose means of propagation you may liken to what you call fusion, is likely to refrain to a great extent from the bisexual reproductive programming of the bodily complex and instead seek out those with whom the sexual energy transfer is of the complete fusion nature insofar as this is possible in manifestation in third density and i have no idea what that means so neither does don and he asks what do you mean by complete fusion nature ross says the entire creation is one of the one creator Thus, the division of sexual activity into simply that of bodily complex is an artificial division. All things thusly being seen as sexual equally, the mind, the body, and the spirit, all of which are part of the polarity of the entity. Thus, sexual fusion may be seen with or without what you may call sexual intercourse to be complete melding of the mind, the body, and the spirit in what feels to be a constant orgasm, shall we say, of joy and delight each in the other's beingness. Would then many wanderers of the higher densities have considerable problems with respect to incarnation in third density because of this different orientation? The possibility and probability of such problems as you call them due to sixth density incarnating in third is rather large. It is not necessarily a problem if you call it thusly. It depends on the unique orientation of each mind-body-spirit complex having this situation or placement of vibratory relativities. So we see here that the word fusion, and it's interesting, cross parallel, this fusion is talked about in the Neville Goddard literature as a fusion with the higher being. Uh, so just 
I'll have to return to that at some point. Note to myself. And another question in the 36th session, Don Elkins asked, then the sixth density entity who has reached that point in positive orientation may choose to become what we call a wanderer and move back. I'm wondering if this ever occurs with a negatively oriented sixth density entity. Do any move back as wanderers? Ra explains that once the negatively polarized entity has reached a certain point in the wisdom density, it becomes extremely unlikely that it will choose to risk the forgetting, for this polarization is not selfless but selfish, and with wisdom realizes the jeopardy of such wandering. Occasionally a sixth density negative entity becomes a wanderer in an effort to continue to polarize towards the negative. This is extremely unusual. What is the mechanism that this unusual sixth density entity would wish to gain to polarize more negatively through wandering? The wanderer, Ra explains, has the potential of greatly accelerating the density whence it comes in its progress in evolution. This is due to the intensive life experiences and opportunities of the third density. Thusly, the positively oriented wanderer chooses to hazard the danger of the forgetting in order to be of service to others by radiating love of others. If the forgetting is per penetrated, the amount of catalyst in third density will polarize the wanderer with much greater efficiency than shall be expected in the higher and more harmonious densities. Similarly, the negatively oriented wanderer dares to hazard the forgetting in order that it might accelerate its progress in evolution in its own density by serving itself in third density by offering to other selves the opportunity to hear the information having to do with negative polarization. Are there any examples of six density negatively polarized wanderers in our historical past? Ross says this information could be harmful, we withhold it. Please attempt to view the entities about you as part of the Creator. We can explain no further. So that's interesting. That implication, because Ra doesn't say no, is that we have had in our historical past six density negatively polarized wanderers. Can you tell me what percentage of the wanderers on earth today have been successful in penetrating the memory block and becoming aware who they are? We can approximate the percentage of those penetrating intelligently their status. This is between eight and one half and nine and three quarters percent. There's a larger percentile group of those who have a fairly well-defined, shall we say, symptomology indicating to them that they are not of this, shall we say, insanity. This amounts to a bit over 50% of the remainder. Nearly one third of the remainders are aware that something about them is different. So you see, there are many gradations of awakening to the knowledge of being a wanderer. We may add that it is to the middle and first of these groups that this information will, shall we say, make sense. Can you tell me if a large percentage of the wanderers here now are those of Ra? Ra says, a significant portion of the six density wanderers are those of our social memory complex. Another large portion consists of those who aided those in South America, another portion, those aiding Atlantis. All six density and all brother and sister groups due to the unified feeling that as we had been aided by shapes such as the pyramid, so we could aid your peoples. I sense possibly a connection between what you just said and why so many wanderers have selected harvest time on this planet to incarnate. Am I correct? Ross says, It is correct that in the chance to remember that which has been lost in the forgetting, there is a nemeity of opportunity for positive polarization. We believe that it is specific thrust of your query. Well, I would just include the question as to why time of harvest is selected by so many wonders as the time of incarnation. Ross says there are several reasons for incarnation during harvest. They may be divided by the terms of self and other self. The overriding reason for the offering of these brothers and sisters of sorrow in incarnative states is the possibility of aiding other selves by the lightening of the planetary consciousness distortions and the probability of offering catalysts to other selves which will increase the harvest. 
There are two other reasons for choosing this service which have to do with the self. The wanderer, if it remembers and dedicates itself to service, will polarize much more rapidly than is possible in the far more atoliated realms of higher density catalyst. The final reason is within the mind-body-spirit totality or the social memory complex totality which may judge that an entity or members of a societal entity can make use of a third density catalyst to recapitulate a learning teaching which is adjudged to be less than perfectly balanced. This especially applies to those entering into and proceeding through sixth density wherein the balance between compassion and wisdom is perfected. Thank you. Can you tell me of various techniques used by the service to others or positively oriented confederation contacts with the people of this planet, the various forms of and techniques them making contact? Ra explains the most efficient mode of contact is that which you experience at this space-time. The infringement upon free will is greatly undesired. Therefore, these entities which are wanderers upon your plane of illusion will be the only subjects for the thought projections which make up the so-called close encounters and meetings between positively oriented social memory complexes and wanderers. Could you give me an example of one of these meetings between a wanderer and a social memory complex as to what the wanderer would experience? One such example, Ra explains, of which you are familiar is that of known as Morris. In this case, the previous contact which other entities in this entity's circle of friends experienced was negatively oriented. However, you will recall that the entity Morris was impervious to this contact and could not see, with the physical optical apparatus, this contact. However, the inner voice alerted the one known as Morris to go by itself to another place, and there an entity with the thought form shape and appearance of the other contact appeared and gazed at this entity, thus awakening in it the desire to seek the truth of this occurrence and of the experience of its incarnation in general. The feeling of being awakened or activated is the goal of this type of contact. The duration and imagery used varies depending upon the subconscious expectations of the wanderer, which is experiencing this opportunity for activation. Elkins asks, I have become aware of a very large variation in contact with individuals. The confederation I am assuming uses a form of contact to awaken, as you say, wanderers, and could you give me general examples of the methods used by the confederation to awaken or partially awaken the wanderers they are contacting? Ross says the methods used to awaken wonders are varied. The center of each approach is the entrance into the conscious and subconscious in such a way as to avoid causing fear and to maximize the potential for understandable subjective experience, which has meaning for the entity. Many such occur in sleep, others in the midst of many activities during the waking hours. The approach is flexible and does not necessarily include the close encounter syndrome as you are aware. Elkins asks, I have assumed that the reason that so many wanderers and those harvested third density entities who have been transferred here find it a privilege and exceptionally a beneficial time to be incarnate upon this planet is that the effect that I just spoke of gives them the opportunity to be more fully of service because of the increased seeking is this in general correct? Ross says this is the intention which wanderers had prior to incarnation. There are many wanderers whose dysfunction with regard to the planetary ways of your peoples have caused, to some extent, a condition of being caught up in a configuration of mind complex activity, which to the corresponding extent may prohibit the intended service. Well, this entire scenario over the next, shall I say, 20 years seems to be aimed at producing an increase in seeking and an increase in the awareness of the natural creation. But also a terrific amount of confusion was it the pre-incarnative objective of many of the wanderers to attempt to reduce this confusion ross says it was the aim of the wanderers to serve the entities of this planet in whatever way was requested and it was also the aim of 
wanderers that their vibratory patterns may lighten the planetary vibration as a whole, thus ameliorating the effects of planetary disharmony and palliating any results of this disharmony. Specific intentions, such as aiding in a situation not yet manifest, are not the aim of wanderers. Light and love go where they are sought and needed, and their direction is not planned uh, for times. Then each of the wanderers here acts as a function of the biases he has developed in any way he sees fit to communicate or simply be in his polarity to aid the total consciousness of the planet. Is there any, shall I say, more physically way that he aids? And what I mean is, do the vibrations somehow add, just as electric polarity or charging a battery? Does that also aid the planet? Does the physical presence of the wanderers? This is correct, Ross says, and the mechanism is precisely as you state. We intended this meeting in the second portion of our previous answer. You may at this time note that as with any entities, each wanderer has its unique abilities, biases, and specialties, so that from each portion of each density represented among the wanderers comes an array of pre-incarnative talents, which then may be expressed upon this plane, which you now experience, so that each wanderer in offering itself before incarnation has some special service to offer in addition to the doubling effect of planetary love and light and the basic function of serving as beacon or shepherd. Thus, there are those of fifth density whose abilities to express wisdom are great. There are fourth and sixth density wanderers whose ability to serve as, shall we say, passive radiators or broadcasters of love and love light are immense. There are many others whose talents brought into this density are quite varied. Thus, wanderers have three basic functions once the forgetting is penetrated. The first two being basic, the tertiary one being unique to that particular mind-body-spirit complex. We may note at this point, while you ponder the possibility-probability vortices, that although you have many, many items which cause distress and thus offer seeking and service opportunities, there is always one container in that store of peace, love, light, and joy. This vortex may be very small, but to turn one's back upon it is to forget the infinite possibilities of the present moment. Could your planet polarize towards harmony in one fine, strong moment of inspiration? Yes, my friends, it is not probable, but it is ever possible. In another question, Don asks, The forgetting process is puzzling to me because you said the fourth density activated people who were here, who had been harvestable, did not have the same forgetting problem. Could you tell me why the wanderer loses his memory? Ross says the reason is twofold. First, the genetic properties of the connection between the mind-body-spirit complex and the cellular structure of the body is different for third density than for third, fourth density. Secondly, the free will of third density entities needs to be preserved. Thus, wanderers volunteer for third density genetic or DNA connections to the mind-body-spirit complex. The forgetting process can be penetrated to the extent of the wanderer remembering what it is and why it is upon the planetary sphere. However, it would be an infringement if wanderers penetrated the forgetting so far as to activate the more dense bodies and thus be able to live, shall we say, in a godlike manner. This would not be proper for those who have chosen to serve. The new fourth density entities, which are becoming able to demonstrate various newer abilities, are doing so as a result of the present experience, not as a result of memory. These are always a few exceptions, and we ask your forgiveness for constant barrages of overgeneralization. So that's a lot of information to go over. This very music that you hear in the background, I believe, is written by a wanderer, somebody from another planet that makes incredible music that came here to raise the vibration of this planet. Clearly, he's doing it with the music.
You meet people like that and you see people like that all the time. People that are showing up on this planet doing amazing things. So I think there's part of that. But it's not important if you're a wanderer or not. You can make a difference in changing the polarity of this planet and become an advanced entity in the process of doing so. So either you're a wanderer or not, but the planet is going through a huge change and we can make a difference in how it goes through this change. There's a path that we're going on where we begin to create our reality much faster. There's a quickening. It's a reality revolution. And if we don't control the way we think, then we will have a chaotic and horrible transition into fourth density. But if we can learn together the way that we think, then we can change the world so that we move to this new earth and it's not as bad as you think. A couple things to really consider and contemplate that if you're in the right vibration, it doesn't matter what cataclysms are happening around you, that you will go through it and be of service to those who need it, you. And that's the coolest thing. There's a lot of information, the warnings that are given, I gave earlier, and the explanations of the different entities. Um, we're talking about hundreds of people that have talked about this in regression. So there is something going on that is related to this and it has an effect on our reality. It's part of the reason that things are happening right now. Now we're moving into this fourth density and part of the reason for that is we're understanding the world better. We see injustice more. We're becoming aware of our race memory. The social memory complex that's discussed in this material is like a living Akashic record. And we're gaining access to that. And that's the shift that we're making into the fourth density. And as we become aware of these truths and we see that there's injustice, we feel we have no choice. People will always fight for injustice. A lot of times they're just simply not aware of it. But when we're feeling it and seeing it, when we see it in injustice and then we feel it in our bodies as a memory because we've accessed this social memory complex, this group mind that starts to form, it'll change the world. And when they talk about the new earth, that's the new earth we're talking about. A brand new planet where we have the knowledge of everyone who's ever lived. So when this happens, there's no more need for hatred or anger or wars. It would go away almost instantaneously. Everything would change and it would be thousands of years of peace as we expand our understandings in our world and become more creative in our ability to create reality. That's what's happening and that's what we will continue to be doing. If you get a chance, check out my quantum jumping, my global quantum jumping meditation, which I have designed so that we can shift into the social memory complex that's discussed in this material. So are you a wanderer? Well, I would love to know. Let me know. Put it in the comments if you believe you're a wanderer and I'd love to hear your story. And if you say you are, I believe you. This world is a crazy place and it's amazing to live in this time. I am grateful for this life that I have. And in whatever happens, I'm sending out waves of love and understanding and joy and happiness and bliss to everyone that's listening. All episodes of The Reality Revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution.